Hello and welcome to ERP Web Tutor. We are back again with one more edition of the Fusion Tidbit videos. And in today's video, we are going to see how to create elements in Fusion HCM. Now, I've already logged in, and um, there are a few things that you need to note that in order to create elements, you either have to have the payroll administrator roles, and um, you can navigate using that. The other option is if you are one of the implementation consultant role, then also you'll be able to create elements. So I will show you both the navigations. So one way is to go to your navigator and under setup and maintenance and under all tasks, you can search for manage element. And you can see the task name is called manage elements. So this is one way of navigating. The other way is if you have the payroll administrator role, then you can go to payroll administration. And you will see manage elements. You can navigate using this route as well. OK. So once we are on the Manage Elements screen, we are ready to create our elements. So just click on this plus icon. And the first thing that you need to do is you need to specify the legislative data group for which this element is going to be created. So I'm going to create this element for United States legislative data group. Then you select the primary classification. I'm going to create a bonus element. So this is going to be a supplemental earnings. Now the secondary classification is optional, but if you're using the payroll module, then you must select the, the secondary classification because that will drive your tax calculation. If not, this is not that much significant, but as a good practice, I would recommend that you select the secondary classification and then click continue. Once I'm on the create page, the first thing that I need to do is I need to make sure that I choose the right effective date. And for all, uh, for all element creation, I'm going to use the 1 1 as the effective date. Okay. I'm going to call this element demo spot bonus. I'm going to use the same reporting name and I'm going to leave the description as blank. Now, as you can see that the input currency is getting defaulted from my legislative data group. If you want to use this element to be paid in a different currency, you can change it here. Now, the durations, should every person eligible for the element automatically receive it? This is the similar concept as what we have, the standard link. So if the person is eligible, this element entry gets created. If not, especially this is a bonus, you do not want um, this element to be assigned automatically. So it should be no. You set your first entry date as the first standard earning date. And then the last entry date, now this is a bonus element. I'm going to say that I'm going to set it to final close so that I can pay this person till you know, this person is terminated and final close is done. Now, the standard rules, at what level? Now, this is assignment level because I'm not using employment terms. Now, this is a recurring or a non-recurring element. Now, a couple of things that you need to note that bonus elements are most likely going to be non-recurring element. And that's how you should be setting it up. Recurring elements uh, also can be created if the element is uh, going to be present in every pay period. Okay. Now process the element once, only once in each payroll period. Now these are some of the payroll specific questions. So what Oracle has done with this create element page is that depending on you know how you have set up your offerings here. If you are running payroll, then you will have these options. If you're not running payroll, 
then you will not have these options. But I just wanted to show you that these are the different options that is available. Okay. So if you are not having payroll, that means that uh, your process or your entry is going to end. You will not see anything related to um, you know the entry or uh, separately. So you'll only see only once in each pay period, whether it's recurring or non-recurring and the employment level, okay? So once you choose your different values that you want, then you have the next one where you have uh, the flat amount. What is the calculation rule? Now this for me will be a flat amount. So I'm going to select flat amount. You can choose factor, percentage, and all of that. Now also if the, the special rules and the FLSA rules, if you do not have the payroll module, you will not see these options, okay? You will only see the payroll, uh, the calculation rules, okay? Okay, and you can see that the names are also here. So finally, click Next. This is the review page, and here you can see all the entries that you have made. Once you are happy with whatever you have entered, you can go ahead and click on Submit. And now you can see that my element has been created. Now, since in this version, we have the payroll offerings enabled, that's why it created all of the input values for the US legislative data group. But in your case, if you do not have the payroll module, then you will only see a handful of input values that gets created by default, okay? So once the element is created, we need to do the next step, which is create the element eligibility. Now, element eligibility is different from the overall, the eligibility profiles. Uh, eligibility profiles are used in most, you know, compensation, absence, uh, also uh, in workforce compensation, individual compensation, all of that. Now, the element eligibility is a similar concept so if you are not using any of the plans and you are directly trying to add this element to an individual, then this element eligibility is evaluated. So you need to have at least one element eligibility in order to use that this element for anything, okay? So if you are using this element only in the plans and you do not intend to add this element directly to any individual, then you can create an open link, which is uh, an open element eligibility without any restrictions. But besides that, normally what we would do is we always create one element eligibility and whether you are using it in a plan or not, that open eligibility is there, okay? So that's the next step. You select this element eligibility and then go to actions and create element eligibility. Okay. Now, the only thing that you need to do here is assign or add the element eligibility name. In my case, this is an open uh, eligibility. There is no restrictions. You can see that you can create your uh, element eligibility based on uh, a lot of factors, employment category, people group, location. Uh, but if you do not want to use any of those, you can you know, leave all of them blank. And I'm going to call it uh, demo spot bonus open, which means that it does not have any conditions, okay? Also, when you are creating the element eligibility, make sure that your effective date is, uh, is appropriate. So once that is done, you can go ahead and submit. Okay, now the only thing I, I, I already mentioned, I would like to repeat is that there are some additional things that you would see when the element gets created, whether you are using payroll or not. If you're not using payroll, the element creation process is much simpler. You will not see a lot of things getting created. If you have payroll, a lot of payroll related, you know, formulas and other stuff, the retro components and balances and all of that gets created, okay? So that's the only thing, only difference between uh, how your element creation would look like. But overall process flow is the same. So once I have created the element, 
I should be able to search for this element. Let me go ahead and search. When I search for element, I have to enter the legislative data group because elements are tied to the legislative data groups. So when I search, I need to search for uh, this particular legislative data group. I can see that there are a lot of elements that starts with demo. So I'm going to look for my um, demo spot bonus. And now I can see that this is my element. These are the other elements that got created because of the payroll module. Uh, if you don't have, then you will only see one element that got created, okay? So at this point, I'm ready to use this element and assign this element to an employee. So let's go to the person management and see how we can add this element. Now in the person management, I'm going to search for an employee and <clears throat> I'm going to search with the person number. The person number is 6668. And this is my employee. So now once I'm on the person record, so first thing I need to make sure is that the payroll exists for this person. So for that, let me go to manage payroll and I can see that there's no payroll for this person. So let me go ahead and make sure that I enter the payroll. This is the higher date. Okay, so now the payroll is there. So now let's go to manage element entries. Click on plus. Let's say this element will be paid, you know, say, let's say on the 29th and my element name is spot bonus. Click on continue. And then you are seeing a lot of other input values because those are the ones that got generated. If you are not using the payroll module, you will not see these entry values. You will only see the ones that you, you know, the amount. And if you are having the payroll module and you do not want these to be displayed, you can always go to the element definition and, you know, hide these input values. So for now, I'm going to enter $500 as the amount. And I will go ahead and submit. Okay, so now if I change my effective date to the 29th, I can see that this is my spot bonus. And since this is a non recurring element, you can see that it has also created the effective start and end date and you can view this element entry only within that pay period. So this is basically how you create a non-recurring element, create the element eligibility, and assign that element to an employee. If you have any questions, please post it, and we will definitely respond. If you want to know more about the Fusion HCM, please do visit our website at www.erpweputer.com, and thanks for watching.